One of the conspirators in the Italian job, the movie, said that with his millions, he wants a house with a room just for his shoes. I could go for something like that. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, how many shoes do you have in your closet? Flats, different colors, high heels if you're a woman. How many of you are actually counting those shoes that you need for sporting events? Your cross trainers, your golf shoes, your tennis shoes for tennis, your tennis shoes for jogging. Every kind of sport has a different kind of shoe. Well, the thing is about dancing, the same is true. Depending on what kind of dance style you use, you actually have different shoes. So the more types of dancing that you try out, the more shoes you're going to have. Enough for a room. Now, how do you carry these shoes around? Because you can't really run around with all these shoes separately, right? Well, this is where we have something called a dance bag. The dance bag's purpose is to help you carry your shoes. In my case, usually a pair of rehearsal shoes, a pair of performance shoes, a backup pair of performance shoes. You never know when something's going to break. But the wonderful thing about these things is that it's kind of a status symbol. You're in a show. You're actually not just using it for shoes, but for warm-up clothes, for curling irons, for mousse, for makeup, you name it. This is your dance bag, everything that you need to perform. Well, the first style of dance for which I needed a bag was tap dance. And the first pair of shoes that I had, I was seven years old. Now, tap shoes are not usually sold as being silver. At that age, you're growing out of your shoes basically every single year. So at the end of the year, you get to spray paint them with silver or gold or red or whatever matches your costumes. And it was really fun. Why they put us in a tutu for a tap routine, I'll never understand. Now, what's so special about tap shoes? Right now, I am not wearing tap shoes, and this is what it sounds like. You can't really hear that, can you? Well, that's where tap shoes come in, because real tap shoes have metal underneath them, on the toes and on the heels. Now, obviously, these are higher than the flat shoes that I started out with. And then, once you start graduating and you become older, you start dancing with higher-heeled shoes. Now, see, you would have been able to hear that step had I been wearing these shoes. It's a little ironic that when you're a kid, you start with flat shoes. Then you go to these high-heeled shoes. Yet, the latest style in tap shoes, we're back to flat shoes again. Now, the reason for that Take a look at the different heels. Not very much sound, a lot of sound. So when I do that, I'm not really getting a lot of sound. I can get a lot louder, and I can do a lot more complex choreography with a shoe like this. So that's why the style really is the flat shoes now. So we're back to the age of seven. Nobody ever really does just tap. Especially when you're a kid, you do it all, ballet, jazz, you name it. Enter jazz shoes, because you don't want to be turning with metal shoes, because you might slip. So at this point, we have jazz shoes. They have suede soles, and they allow you to point your toes. Because if you don't have something that's flexible, your foot will point, and then the shoe will point back up. That's not what you want. So essentially, these are very well-worn shoes. I also have them in black. I also have them in flesh-colored. I have a ton of these. But there's always that one trend. These are the same types of shoes, but they were called a jazz boot. I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking, and I've worn them a grand total of one time, which you can see there's almost no wear on the bottom of these shoes. So it's all about the real jazz shoes. Then when you grow up, you start doing shows. And at that point, you again graduate to the high-heeled shoes. These are called character shoes, but this time without metal on the bottom. Of course, we have to have these in different colors as well. And my next performance, I was actually hired by Busch Gardens to dance in the German show. These shoes are from that time. And the first thing that we did here is actually put neolite down at the bottom. Because we had to go out into the audience, and we had to get people to come dance with us. And 
we called it the Jim McAfeatorium. It was where people came to eat, to see the shows, to get a drink, to cool off. The Fest House held 2,000 people. And with choreography with lots of fast turns on the stage, we wanted to make sure that we don't slip when we did things like this. Our job was to circle around around stage and to actually do those spins. Now, you wanted to make sure that you had some good footing in order to do that. So, Fest House. I have so many shoes. They all look like that. Five years, eight casts. I still have a collection. And then I discovered ballroom about a year and a half ago. And I found out that there are so many more shoes that could be had. And they were very different. And this is a recent bolero routine from a showcase. Now, these shoes look completely different. The black ones were good for starters. But it turns out that in ballroom, you have different kinds of shoes for different dances as well. For example, for smooth dances, like a waltz and a foxtrot, you have closed toe shoes. You have slightly thicker heels. The reason being, when you start dancing, you're actually, as a woman, pointing with your toe, and then you're doing a heel push as you go. So as you're doing one of these boxes, you're going like this, and then you've got more heel leads as you go into the next step. So these are the kinds of shoes that you use. But the real fun ones are the Latin ones, like these, the ones that I'm wearing. Because in Latin, you don't have heel leads like you do in the waltz and the foxtrot. In Latin, you basically have a lot of forward action. You're, you're on your toes, and it's all about the hip movement. So you're doing kind of a rumba. And you're never actually, your feet don't really leave the ground a whole lot. They're really shushing against the ground, and you're just changing weight. So with the rumba, I don't have to worry about heel leads, and I don't have to worry about pushing off with the heels. That's why these work. The other reason they work is because they work well with the Latin dances, with the costumes. Because there's a whole world of shoes that I'm sure I haven't discovered yet. So in addition to a room for my shoes, I think I'm going to need a room for my ballroom gowns, too. <laughs>